There was some, I ran through some data of, of um, how many users there are out there and how, what organisations are doing about that, but also highlighted the number of organisations that don't have any type of guides or infrastructure in place. Chris, what are the, what are the risks here? What's, what's the... There are, there, are lots of, there are lots of risks, um, but uh, none that can't be overcome, I believe. I think uh, there are obviously reputational and brand risks when things go wrong. Um, and, and I think that's where a lot of people, particularly when they're starting out, that's, that's where they really focus on. It's like, oh, what happens if I stuff this up? And what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to the organisation? Um, I, I would say to that that, you know, policies provided by business can help to mitigate, help to get people orientated um, and, and understanding what, what those challenges are. And then guidelines are there. Firms should have guidelines that actually help to enable people to actually break down the challenge, if you like, that they might be seeing and, and work out how to get started and, and, and what, what the etiquette is, which, which I think is you know, obviously your, your key area. Um, there, are, there are risks around um, personal reputa reputation, um, but as in all social environments, I think the, the biggest risk is often people don't see that social media is in fact a public forum. It can feel very isolated when you're sat there at your PC or on your mobile device. Um, and you don't realise a lot of the time what you say there is not, is not a private discussion. If you were to walk into this room today and start speaking, you know, you'd be acutely aware of the hundred or so people in this room. Um, you should be thinking, well, there could be thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people listening to what I have to say here. And the same rules apply. So, but I would say the biggest risk is, is, as we're talking about why we're here today, not engaging is your biggest risk because you miss out on all these opportunities. What are your thoughts on that, Matt? Um, I think from our perspective, we're the technology platform that a lot of you probably use in a professional context um, for social selling. So number one that's imperative for us is that everyone's got appropriate training. Um, it's extremely important. Uh, in fact, all the corporations you represent are LinkedIn's number two priority. All of you individually are our number one priority. So the member experience has to be um, at the highest level. Um, training people to use this in a, the, an appropriate fashion for social selling um, has to be done with every single client. Um, so internal policies and the approach that you need to take and the word I constantly use is thoughtful. Um, you know, the stat that you showed earlier, which uh, was quite telling 33% of US internet users said they ended a relationship because there were too many updates. Just because this is a new medium now, as opposed to mass emailing or cold calling, doesn't mean that you can't get just as annoyed by being bombarded by messaging on social media. So, you know, it's brand diminishing when you get sent the same templated mass email once every month from a corporation trying to sell to you, or when you get a cold call at 6 p.m. on your way home from one of the big banks trying to upgrade your account. Um, you can't take this type of mass approach in social media. You've got to be, you've got to have the right strategy in place. You've got to have the right education and training in place. I just uh, <clears throat> add to that is, uh, you know, one of the one of the big dangers of of having a technology platform and having something that's scalable is that, you know, we. We live today in a culture that promotes easy. You know, everything is easy. You know, there's an app for that. There's a quick way of doing that. You know, we, we get frustrated if something takes uh, longer than a couple of seconds. So we need to be very careful that, again, that this doesn't become a substitute for actually doing the hard work. And just for just uh, leveraging off um, what was just said there is that if you take a physical networking event, uh, if you came to this event and just walked up to people and started randomly telling them, you know, about something you read in the newspaper this morning that has absolutely no context, but you just said, oh, you know, did you see this morning in the newspaper, blah, blah, blah. And yet that's what people do online all the time, is that they just think it's all about volume and they just churn out and put out all of this nonsense. And, and it just adds to the noise. And yet, if, if you did that in a, in a physical networking event, you know, you'd soon be the person standing off in the corner on your own because everybody else would be like, oh, avoid that guy because he's just spouting nonsense. Um, 
And that's what's happening to people online. So I, I totally agree the whole idea of taking a thoughtful approach. You have to you have to add value and you have to be doing something of value rather than just say, I'm online now, this tool is really easy, you know, I've I've got Hootsuite working, I'm you know, got fifty five million tweets going out a day. <laughs> Um, you know, you got to go. My, you know, like my mother used to say, actually say to me quite often. You know, if you've got nothing to say, don't say it. Uh, and I think that applies again in this arena. If you've got nothing of value to say, if you're not adding some context, if you're not adding value to the conversation, don't say it. You know, wait until you've got something of value to say and be discerning and be thoughtful.